Hey everyone, I'm Daniel Cohn, the editorial director here at SPIN, and we're here with Connie from CU Space Cowboy. You've been very forthcoming about your, uh, s with your struggles in the past with uh, sobriety. So the old saying is, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Have you found your sobriety changes your relationship to m your music and your fans? Um, I don't think it really changes my relationship with music because um, for me like using like drugs and sex and alcohol as a way to like cope with like whatever I was going through always kind of served as like a side from music like music was always my main form of catharsis um, but when I kind of fell into the, all those things all the substances and stuff they somewhat intermingled in like terms of like my lyrics and like what I was singing about um, but now that I'm clean, I get to kind of focus on singing about other things and writing songs, not just about, like, I overdosed and almost died or I'm struggling with drug addiction. So I guess in a way it does affect it, but in a, in a positive way. More so than, like, oh, like, I don't have struggles to write about anymore, so I can't write songs anymore, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you used your music back then as an outlet to channel your pain and your struggles. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and now that there isn't as much that I'm constantly at war with, with substances and, and all that, then I can focus on writing a different kind of song, like something that's m more fun. You know, it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom, depressing, and I can write about other things that were also going on in my life this, at that time, but weren't as, like, didn't have as much precedence as, like, my drug and alcohol problem. What is the perception you think the music has, or music business has around uh, sobriety? Um, I mean, in hardcore, um, it we have straight edge, you know, so there's a lot of people who are like very supportive of sobriety and stuff. Of course, there are definitely bands and people out there who are like, "Oh, come take a bunch of shots with me, do X, Y, and Z," and that's like cool because like, I still drink. Um, I have a, a hard limit on myself as to how much I'm allowed to drink per day, and I, I stay away from drugs. Um, but in like my scene with like the people I am friends with and the shows I go to, it, staying sober and clean is like not much of a problem. Because you, there was an album that you guys released that with, was you know that shared the story of grief, addiction, and relapse. Did you find how find that to be kind of a point where you were able to get through it? Um, I mean it. It should have been. It wasn't necessarily because when I was done recording that record, that's like I went home and like overdosed two weeks later. Um, so it's still. I, I I would love to say that that album was like the let everything out and I went like clean immediately after that, but I definitely didn't. Um, it was definitely more of something that in the moment it felt like good to talk about, but then I still had to do the whole journey of like, you actually have to get clean, you actually have to detox, you have to do the whole thing and stay clean. What would you say to people who have family members struggling with addiction or to a person who is early in their recovery? Um, I think that the biggest thing is understanding that, like, you probably will fail at times. And, like, I had plenty of relapses. But for me, the most important thing is not that you relapse that night. It's what you do the next morning. Like, if as long as you get back on and aren't, you know, indulging and doing those things, things again then like you're still on the path you're still like doing well even if you fumble at times and it's important a lot of people s see themselves when they do stumble as failing oh. when it's just i mean i don't know but it just seems like just what happens and you just have to i mean yeah up. when dealing with something as addictive like as like opiates or like benzos for me like yeah i mean if any addict who's gone clean is going to tell you that you will relapse it's going to happen even if you go to a 90-day detox center and do the whole thing like you're gonna relapse it's gonna happen and it's okay you just need to the next morning not hit the dealer up again you need you need to stop there and you need to restart your journey well, yeah, what, enc what encouraging words would you have to someone who just relapsed and is struggling with that? I mean, the biggest thing just is that, like, don't, don't beat yourself up over it too much because that will lead you to want to do more and more and more and be like, oh, I, I messed up last night. I Screw it. I'm just going to dive back in head first, you know? Um, it's just important that, like, you remember that it's Im that your recovery is important to you. Staying clean is important to you and to those around you, most likely. 
So you just need to have the strength to say, I made a mistake last night, but I'm not going to make a mistake this morning. It's powerful. Thanks so much for dropping by, Connie. Is there oh, anything else you want to say to everyone out there? Um, not really. Just if you are out there struggling with, with substance abuse problems, just remember that you're not alone, that there are many people out there who are ex-addicts or current addicts or people currently in the midst of getting better and that it's a process and nobody goes into this and just automatically is like, I'm drug free for the rest of my life. It's, it's, a, it's a process. It's long and it's painful, but it's like for the better.